Every October, the world's elite anglers converge on the fishing mecca of Cabo San Lucas, Mexico to take part in the richest fishing tournament in history. This is the Bisbee's Black and Blue. Hello everyone, I'm Todd Harris, and to say there's extreme excitement around this event would be a massive understatement. With more than 200 teams participating and a prize purse over $10 million, well, it's still the people that are the main draw. So many good people. There's so many good memories. And plus, there's no place like San Lucas. We're ready to get it the fuck on. Bisbee! Party's just getting ramped up, and there's a lot of anticipation. A lot of high hopes for tomorrow and bringing in the big one. 11.4 million in the last 15 minutes now. Son of a bitch. I've been dreaming about doing this trip for 10 years now. Just a lifelong dream. If you weren't fishing in the Bisbee's Black and Blue this year in Cabo, what would you be doing? Be dead. The experience is top notch. This is really the brain trust, if you can call it a brain trust, of the organization. Registration, money collected, and then they release the hounds. How bad would you like to see Wayne have to write a $10 million check? I hope somebody gets a big one. I really enjoy, like in the Little Bisbee, when somebody gets a big fish. 555! Awesome, you guys. 555, the new first place fish in the tournament. One thing that everyone's kind of said, they don't feel like this is a big corporate event. They feel like this is family. It literally is. It's funny. I get asked all the time, how big is your company and all? Well, my sister, me, now our kids, you know, gosh, uh, next year we'll have my grandson here. The Bisbee family has grown just like the Bisbee tournament. We took a moment to sit down at the freshly renovated Baja Cantina with one of the newest leaders of this family's rich history. Say hello to Jordan Bisbee. Jordan, we're so happy to have you. Thank you so much for taking this time. Give me a quick thumbnail sketch of the Bisbee family and, and your memories of how this all got started. Um, absolutely. So I remember coming down as a small kid. My grandpa at the time was just kind of handed over, passed the torch to my dad, Wayne Bisbee. And so even as a young kid, I was coming down with my brother and my mom and we were selling t-shirts and just kind of hanging out at the way station. And I don't know, they put us to work young. <laughs> and so we've been coming and enjoying it ever since my whole life. Did you ever think you'd make a career out of this? No, I didn't. Um, I mean, it's just kind of happened naturally. You know, the more my brother and I came down, the more we got involved and the older we got, the more responsibilities they gave us. And so far, it's been, it's been really great. People often say you never want to work with family and friends, but you guys have made it work. I know it's always not always smooth sailing, <laughs> but you guys have made it work. No, I absolutely love it. And I tell people all the time, it's so rare to find companies that have been around for 42 years that is still, it's family owned and operated. You know, getting to work with my aunt, my dad, my brother, my cousins. I mean, it's rare and it's the coolest thing ever. You know, what's that old saying? If you love what you do for your work, you're never gonna work a day in your life. So it just kind of, it works and I love it. Speaking of your life, you had a big year this year. What was it like going to South Africa and the tracking and the tagging, especially being with your dad? Oh my gosh, it was insane. So I came aboard a couple years ago and started raising funds for the projects and I've never stepped foot in South Africa. So I just was like, yes, I love rhinos, let's do this. Um, but actually being there, the country is absolutely beautiful. Um, and then getting that hands-on experience that I've only been able to speak about, you know, not from personal, you know, experience, just, hey, this is what we're doing. We're doing some great things. So um, I hate to say it because it sounds so cheesy, but it absolutely changed my life. It was the most incredible trip I've ever been on. <laughs> Jordan, 20 years from now, if I come down here the last week of October, will I find you and your family still doing the same thing? Absolutely. No, I will be here till my last breath. I mean, I, I love what we do. I love what we've created. And it's an absolute honor to get to work alongside 
my family, my dad, my aunt, my brother. I mean, this is huge, um, you know, and I know that I'm really excited for what the future holds and, and I wanna be here in 20 years. And heck yes, I will be bringing my kids and have them start selling t-shirts and put them to work and kind of keep the legacy going. <laughs> so there's no shortage of family to run this family owned and operated tournament and no family business would be complete without a foul mouth grandpa. And your advice to all the anglers when they leave tomorrow is going to be what? What's job number one? Bring me a goddamn fish. $11.5 billion, gang. It's 219 votes. It's crazy. And with that, a year's worth of planning and preparation goes into hyperdrive. The 42nd edition of the Bisbee's Black and Blue is now underway. All these people fishing, everybody after, best boats in the world, best fishermen in the world, somebody has to get a fish. That's a beast. So what brings you guys to Cabo? We own on Kiss Cruise. Kiss Cruise, yeah, so yeah, yeah. very big fan. Not here to catch fish? No, oh, no, no. no. I found the only two people in Cabo that are not catching fish. They're here for KISS. People come to Cabo for all kinds of reasons. KISS may be a close second to fishing, but for past million dollar check winners, Team Sea Angel, the links aren't too shabby either. Cabo lifestyle, baby, can't beat it. I caught one of my, probably the first billfish I ever caught here in about 83, four. We've always liked Cabo. I like the golf, I like the people. Uh, Cabo's just beautiful. Plus the Bisbees is, uh, for us fishermen, it's uh, the greatest tournament on earth. So it's just after five o'clock, day one of the 42nd annual Bisbees Black and Blue. Now, two boats are hooked up. One boat has a fish on board on its way into the scale. So we're gonna have some weighing still to do here on day one, fingers crossed. So the word on the water is that this boat coming in now has got a fish that could be a qualifier. You're a bit of a fish whisperer because every time the fish comes in, you always seem to be within five or ten pounds. Uh, is that just experience, or you just can sight a, a fish's weight pretty quick? No, it's it's mostly experience and and experience down here. This is our 16th year and seen a lot of fish, and uh, usually we can tell. You're not gonna give me a look after you get the fish off the say or thumbs up. No, I try not to do that. I mean, if the if the, if the team if the I won't team, tell anyone. I know, but if the team sees that, it tips them off. You know, they, you don't want to do that. I try to be straight laced as I can. Good man for the job. Part-time work at the IRS, too. Oh, we are really excited. What a great day. So we got in this thing two weeks ago. We didn't have a boat. We didn't have a team. I called my friend Matt up, said, hey, you want to go put a team together? We put a team together last minute. Alan O'Brien, our team captain, was able to get us a boat five days ago. I told my wife I'm coming regardless whether we have a boat or not. We're going to figure it out all the way up to the last minute. That's what we did. If this fish is over 300 pounds, it is a well over $1 million fish for this team. We did it! First time at the podium for us in uh, about 11 years, and it uh, feels good. feels real good. Native Spirit Tequila team is who this is. Clean living, that's what gets you that. Drinking tequila gets you a million dollars. 344 pounds! Three, four. You just brought in a 344 pound fish. You seem pretty calm and the guns are all rested. Well, we got two days. We gotta wait and see what happens, right? Like today's a winning day for sure. But what, you know, we got two more days and we're at, ride it out. It could be a really big party on Saturday. It can be, yeah. We were supposed to go home on Saturday. Well, only if we didn't catch any fish, but now I guess we're going home on Sunday. <laughs> Do they look $1.4 million happier right now? I think they do. <laughs> so you guys were pretty happy when you got the fish. Yeah. You were really happy when it came to the scales and it was 344. Yeah. But you seem to be even more happy when Wayne Bisbee said something about $1.4 million. Well, the problem is when you're out there and you're trying to do the math, you can't do yeah. the math to figure out who put in for what categories. So we we had no idea no that number was going to be that big. We, no idea. It could have been $25. We'd still been happy. And, and to all our friends, we had three friends that were going to come with us, but they didn't want to put the money up. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs>
Good morning, Bisbees. We are day two now. We're ready to win big bucks. I hope uh, to see everybody at the skills as long as they're one pound less than we are. The good news is we're tied for dead last. Hello, good morning, people! <laughs> If that start at 8 o'clock don't get your blood Three, pumping, you're two, a dead man. If you can't get up for fishing for millions, then you don't deserve to be here, really. So in day two action at the 42nd annual Bisbee's Black and Blue, no qualifying fish brought to the scale. Who needs a million dollar fish? I got a million dollars worth of beads. Wayne, at the end of day number two, usually you're in a good mood, you're handing out some money, you're going to Baja Cantina, George is going to feed you. That's not the scenario today. I'm always in a good mood, but uh, yeah, I, I'd be in a better mood if we'd wait a fish today. That's for damn sure, so it's going to be a big roll tomorrow. Yeah, we're across the board, and uh, yeah, now we're gonna go hang a big slob today and uh, rock the world. We need some luck out there. Big money on the pot. We're going. We're going for it. That is always a good sound. If the cart's coming down to the dock, that means one thing: it's a fish on the way. All right, Bert, what's at stake? All right, so a lot at stake. I mean, this boat coming in. Uh, if they make the scale, then they win the last two days, second two days, and if they do not make weight, then the Possibly the boat that weighed the first day will win all three days. So we still have hookups, we still have other opportunities, but this is the first fish coming and a lot at stake on this fish. A lot of nervous folks right now. This is like when a pitcher's got a no hitter going, no one's gonna say anything, but everyone's taking a long, hard look at it. They won't say a word until this thing hits the scale. The fish came up early this morning on the short, short left. And we were working the fish uh, with stand up gear. So it got a little bit close to the boat, it went down sound, and uh, that's when you know we didn't have the, uh, the reach with the rod, so we changed angler. So I got the stand-up harness and got on the, on the back and finished the fish from the, uh, from the gun hole. What about your son? Tell me about it. Uh, well, he's been fishing with me, well, since he was like 10 years old, but now he's really got into it. Hey. Here's my captain, which he did, he did a really great job with the fish that went sound, so everything was done right. We still have about seven or eight million dollars that is unclaimed after this in categories that have not been filled. Oh yeah, this is gonna take three, this is a three million dollar fish. <laughs> I can tell just by looking at it that it's gonna weigh. 461 pounds! <laughs> Is this the ultimate father-son trip? This is it, uh, epic. Anything to say is epic. Looks like it's, it's gonna be in the game. We, we got a few hours to go, so we'll see what happens. So you got two and a half hours to sweat it out. Uh, what are you gonna do in the time while you wait to see if this is the one? Uh, enjoy, savor the moment. I mean, we're here already, so we waited to fish. That's, that's already a, a winning, winning deal. Bert's second fish of the day, so how does the drama turn here if this is a qualifier? All of these boats are in so far up to the five. This guy's in up to the 10. If he if he just qualifies, he gets the $10,000 money, which is well over $2 million. About to find out if this in fact is a happy ending. Kevin Burke's the owner of the boat. It's a lot, lifelong dream of his to have a boat down here. I'm sorry, I'm pretty emotional right now, but he's right behind us. It's fantastic. And here they are. Nice fish. This is a nice fish, King. It's a nice fish. Come on! Nice! 449 pounds! Four forty nine. Tell me a little bit about.
about the lure that you guys used to land this monster? Actually, I bought several lures from Ultimus, and the guy that makes their lures called me and told me since I was buying so many lures that he was gonna make three of his favorite lures that he fishes in Cabo with. This is one of them and give them to me for free. So he gave me three baits. This is the last of the three baits that we fished. And within 10 minutes, he was on it. So third time's a charm for the happy ending. That's correct. 2.4 million and change for this bad boy. Smile, you all. And that is just what was it like when you got it on board? I mean, you got a pretty good gauge. You've fished for a long time. I'm telling you, it, it was, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I, it when they got it through the door, I was just like, took it the whole back of the boat. I mean, it's just fantastic. I, I can't imagine. The Bisbee is the best thing, the best fishing tournament in the world. There's no doubt about it. I've wanted to fish this tournament since I was a kid, and it's, it's <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> so hard to believe the Bisbee's black and blue, the 42nd edition has come to a conclusion. What a tournament. The legacy continues, and we look forward to next year's edition, the 43rd running of this prestigious event. So on behalf of everyone here in Cabo, I'm Todd Harris. We'll see you next year. We're going to start with our third place release. On board the team Chupacabra. Towards Trisha to collect your check for $22,000. Chupacabra. All right, Trisha's handing out our second place release team, Tip Team Karma. How about $39,780? First place release team. If the team of the Freebird would head our way. Head our way. How about $114,920? All right, gang, we're getting into the wade fish category. We have first through third coming your way. If the team RV rental housing would wander our way, 344 pound fish that happen to be worth $1.590 million. We're now on our second place team gang, team happy ending. You saw them on the video all emotional. Get on up here, you're gonna be more emotional right now. Spin it Trish, $2,533,250. Segundo lugar, se lleva la polla de 10,000 dólares de los tres días. This is for a 461-pound blue marlin caught by Adrian Ponce de Leon. Our Mexico City team. <laughs> How about turn that bad boy around, Trish? El Mexicano team, $3,263,700. I want to thank all of you massively for being with us. It's insane how this tournament shook out this year. Cannot thank you enough. We'll be in contact with you over the next couple weeks. So please hang out with us, enjoy your drink, and I want to thank the Baja Cantina and again the Appy organization for letting us take over their beer. And then we'll let Cabo Max start behind all these chats.